in spiritual practice, let's say that monk who had psychic energy, he lost his, he got overpowered by, he came to be, uh, he was overpowered by a negative, ten, the opposite tendency. So uh, it was a masquerading one. And uh, the other story he had that uh, three uh, college students, right? And then they got overpowered by his mind, his compassion got all his or her compassion got overpowered by uh, another opposite tendency of lust. And in the case of uh, that monk with the beautiful chanting voice, right? And uh, you, as part of the audience, and you had uh, you had devotion, and you, your devotion got overpowered by lust for his voice. And it happens anytime, anywhere. And don't worry, it even happens to Bodhisattvas, it happens to uh, experience meditation practices. That's how our mind, mind plays tricks on us. Mind really plays tricks on us. I was going to say this is, this is a fine line situation. There are fine lines. It's very hard to identify the fine line. It's very difficult to see that up until something has really happened and uh, damage already done. And in certain cases, the the situation is irreversible, you can reverse that, and then uh, the reality is irresistible, you can resist that, and then uh, so it really happens a lot. But it's never to worry, because that's how our mind is. That's why we need that simple meditation technique. You can practice at workplace, anywhere. And I'm happy to see that. We, during the last 11 years or so in America, in the USA and Canada, I have seen a lot of practitioners, different, they practice different religions, could be a priest, could be a bishop, high ranking priest, doesn't matter. They still practice meditation and they love this simple technique. Some live far away from a Buddhist temple, far away from a retreat center. They have, there's no way, it's humanly impossible to make it for a retreat for them. Not just because they, it's long distance that they have to drive or travel, but because they are too busy. But they would still practice meditation. Sometimes, you know what, in America, there are these so-called leadership seminars. You have to, it costs you so much money. One, two hours, two hundred bucks, US. But still, we have Buddhist things there. Buddhist leadership seminars. Seminar workshops for real estate, people who are real estate business. Right? We help them identify the good energy in a new house that they're they going to sell. And uh, how, how negative the energy is. And you can identify that and meditation helps you, right? And uh, office secretaries, office girls, and business people, and the travelers, bus drivers, professionals, different people, whatever your career, whatever the, the walk of life that you come from, whatever the professional background you come from, as a human being, you need to relax. You need that awareness. Because if you are a human being, for sure it is an it is in, inevitable. It's inevitable that you get uh, overpowered by opposite tenders. That's why in your, if you are in a relationship, if you are in an affair, and in your family life, in your, uh, in your work, at your workplace, in your profession, in your career, you always encounter a lot of problems. Most of the time, you don't listen properly. Right? Yesterday at uh, Central Temple, we talked about power of listening, how to practice, uh, do compassion, how to practice compassionate listening. Most of the time you don't listen to your mind. I'm not going to repeat that talk and maybe you can ask the chief, our chief reverend for a copy something and you can listen to that. But let me tell, get one thing from that talk. You need to listen to yourself. And that technique is meditation. Right? And then, uh, it is not a leadership skill that you only talk but they were but you never listen to others. It is typical of a boss that you only talk, but never listen. Right? Listening on social level, that is that's the, the, the biggest ever, the more first and foremost counseling technique. I, as I already repeated to say, I don't have a Western counseling license, but still, I, I, the only license that the, the, the license that Buddha has given me is Dharma. I use that guidance. I listen to people, right? I make them talk, I listen, and then on day I listen to myself. Self listening to yourself. And when you help others, when you practice compassion, listen to others. Make them talk. Don't cut them off. Right? And
and let a professional counsel to cut, cut the clients off. So unfortunately, you call them clients because it's a paid business, right? But uh, so uh, you have friends, fellow human beings. We call Dhamma companions. Dhamma Sahayaka. Sahayaka means companions or friends in Pali. Dhamma Sahayaka. Dharma friends, Dhamma companions, Dharma fellows. As a Dharma fellow, you could uh, listen. Listen then uh, at certain when when uh, the other fellow, other party gets stuck, you can make you can give some suggestions very smoothly so that they can they can thereby you make them talk. More importantly, what I'm going to say is you we have to listen to our our, our, our mind. What's going on in now my, my mind my mind? I always only those who really need to take care of themselves are able to listen to themselves. Those who are selfish would only sneak into other people's business and do see what they are doing, thereby totally forgetting themselves. Those who are selfish would even become mindless. Those who are those who consider those who are concerned about uh, self care, they really listen to themselves, and they they don't they don't sneak into others. They don't uh, see how much meditation others practice, right? And don't worry that your friends do only vipassana, not samatha. Right? You do your own samatha, and perhaps you would have achieved more vipassana much faster. And when you burn your soul, right? And then it's because you were doing, uh, you were, you had cling too much to the phone. Don't blame the uh, the gas cooker. Don't blame the cooker, and don't complain again the other party on the uh, the party on the other line on the other side because uh, and then you'd have watched timing or you'd have you have done multitasking at least at least dual tasking you would be uh, making uh, how to say making the soap at the same time you, you could have been on the phone and then so sometime later you complain right the moment you talk to the other party you totally forgot the soap and it was so fascinating, enjoyable to talk to him over, right? And that was the difference. Then now you complain, right? At that point, you had totally been overpowered by fascination, right? And that tendency, you totally forgot the soup and spurn, right? And your children are coming, or maybe uh, your parents have to do that. You totally forgot that. So that, that's how our, given the moment, always opposite tendons are looking for a chance to to play tricks on our mind. So that's why those who cheat, others first cheat themselves. Right? Those who try to deceive others, this uh, first deceive themselves. Of all kinds of deceptions, self-deception is the worst. Of all kind of cheating, self-cheating is the worst. So that's how life is. Make it simple, make your Buddhist practice simple. And don't worry that you, do, you have never been to retreat and don't worry that you will never make it because you are too busy. And only we only have to get rid of the notion, the notion that you are too busy, too poor and poor. Never too busy if you really want to practice meditation. If you can stick to the phone like two hours in office, at office, why not take uh, ten minutes for meditation? Close your eyes and relax and do this thing, right? So having said that, uh, Buddhism is a way of life and then uh, Dharma is a way of life and it helps you deal with your human in, in, in human tendencies, tendencies of the mind. A spiritual advancement means uh, successfully dealing with your tendencies so that you manage your tendencies so that you feel emotionally stable, so that your emotional health is much higher, much more stable. And that's the purpose of Buddhist practice, and that really gives you awareness on a daily basis. Unless you achieve that emotional health, that, that emotional stability on daily life, it would be very hard to achieve nirvana. Right? Nirvana itself is a living experience one day. But don't worry that it's too far, and don't uh, think nirvana in the abstract. A lot of people think nirvana in the abstract. Unfortunately, people consider meditation in the abstract as well. And then sometimes he says, oh, you know what, he is a meditator, oh, he's too hard. Don't think that way. Medi